What is up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Niceish and today is the first video of a series of videos that I'm putting out aimed at uh, new new players to Rust electrical and you know those who want to sort of hone their their skills. I realize that I have, you know, kind of a, a bunch of really great pieces of information, but they're scattered throughout my other videos. And so I'm going to bring the most important ones together uh, into a series of videos aimed at um, walking you through your, your adventure into Rust Electrical. So let's go ahead and just get started. I'm going to start with crafting. I'm not going to show you what it, you know, what it takes to to tech tree because you can look at that on your own. Um, but basically that you can see that the level one and level two workbenches contain all of the electrical materials. And so if you want to tech tree, uh, you would start here with the electrical on, on the first one. And on the far right here, you'll see that the a, a huge portion of, of the stuff is here. Um, and so in the level two workbench, same thing. Um, we have the rest of them here, the level two stuff, you know, in the middle right side, and then starting from the pager down is the final, final stuff there. So you can you can tech tree every component. Um, you can also purchase certain components, which makes it very very convenient. We'll we'll talk about that as I get to things. Um, and the only other thing you're going to need is a wiring tool. And so if you look up the wire tool, oops, spell that right, the wire tool. Um, it is too high quality metal and you need a level workbench, level one workbench to build it. Um, once you have it, you don't need to like, there's no, there's no sourcing of wires or anything. So, um, the first power source we're going to talk about, um, the first root power source, but I guess it's a good point. We should just clarify that, uh, rust uses, a sort of, a a tree nomenclature with a, with a lot of its electricity stuff. Um, and so they're called root power sources, meaning because they're the root, you know, the root of the tree, the first thing, the generation of power, um, they flow into everything else. And so we'll kind of talk about that as we go. Uh, but the first thing we're going to talk about is the small generator. Um, the small generator is probably the least utilized power source in the game in part because when you have things like solar panels and wind turbines, these are not quite as useful depending on what you're doing. They're more for specific types of circuits and things like cave bases. Um, and so certain caves, it's really hard to like, you know, route power down there, at least hard to do so without people, you know, it being very obvious that you're in a cave. And so these are very handy um, They're you know, the 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 rate of fuel consumption is for, you know, they, they can hold a maximum of 500 fuel uh, and they burn four fuel for every minute. So I made this like, you know, simple little ratio um, calculation here where if you have 500 fuel, 500 divided by four gives you 125 minutes, 125 minutes divided by 60 minutes to, to go into, into hours gives you 2.08 hours of runtime with a full uh, full tank. And so, uh, you know, two hours is not a ton if you think about it, but if you're using this for certain types of circuits for emergency backup power, um, there's actually some very clever ways you can do this. You, you, you can use these and I'm going to cover these more in a future video, uh, but they, they essentially have, they have two inputs, a four start and a four stop, and then they have the power out. This is what you run to your base or the thing you're powering. Um, you don't need to use the four stop and force, you know, four start and four stop. You can hold E to look at the menu. You can open up to see the, the, the tank there. You can put your fuel. Um, so you can turn it on just with E and it'll run, it'll output. It's going to output a maximum of 40 volts. Um, so I've got 40 volts arriving here at this light. Um, you can turn, it's just like the boat. You can turn it on and off with E. You can also turn it on, on with the force start and you can turn it on, turn it off with the force stop. Um, important to note, it's not, it doesn't matter if it stays connected. So if you force start it and you unhook this, it's still going to run and you can turn it off manually. So the, the point there being that you can use this uh, generator for some sort of clever, clever circuits. If you think about that attribute there. Uh, and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you wanted to hook this thing to your base, you would just, you know, in all these examples, if you know, if you're really new, I'm just using a branch switch to, to, to simulate the power, the beginning of power distribution in your base. And um, this is something you'll definitely want to do. It'll be again, covered in another video. But if I wanted to just output that over to the, uh, the base, I would just run the output of the generator straight into this branch here. And if I were running this thing, you'd see that I have 40 volts arriving here, which means I have 37 here and two here. That's 39 because the branch takes a volt. So you have 39 after the fact, the minimum mandatory two on the branch out and whatever's left over on the power out. Uh, again, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, the generator is useful for spe specific applications, um, but it, you know, that's going to be covered more in depth in a later video. So the next thing we're going to be talking about are solar panels. These are by far the most popular 
um, root power source in the game. Uh, and they're very, very easy to use. There's just a few misconceptions we're gonna go over. Uh, number one is how do you place them? You know, in, in what direction are you supposed to place them? And so the answer to that is you're gonna place them either north or south, period, one of the two. And the way you decide that is if you are, and let's open up the map here, if you are squarely in the north end of the map, you're gonna point them south. If you are definitely in the south side of the map, you're going to point them north. And the map boundary is this uh, boundary between the uh, 12 and 11 here. If you built smack on that line and you're not sure, you can run a very simple test where you place one solar panel due north, you can see my compass at the top there, and then one solar panel due south, and whichever one has the highest output, this one's running zero, it's probably dark, and I don't realize that because I have my admin thing. If I check, it's probably getting dark out here. Yeah, it's gonna be dark. So if I were to make it noon by the magical powers of admin, uh, there we go, and you look at the output of this one, it's gonna be 20, there we go. And if you look at the output of this one, it's going to be one, which means all the panels on my base need to face due north. And so let's say I had two more that I wanted to hook up. Uh, you know, you can rotate, rotate the direction with R. Uh, I'm just gonna aim this thing due north on my compass up top. And I'm gonna do the same thing for another one here. And there you go, that's three solar panels, all hooked up, or at least all placed, and they're all outputting the max they can based on the direction, which is 20 volts. That's the max a uh, solar panel can put out. If they're damaged, they will start to reduce their output. So you wanna keep them at full health at 100. Um, and so to hook these up, and we're gonna just jump into just one quick more, you know, a little thing I think, cause it, it applies, we're doing root power sources. So the root combiner should be included in this tutorial. If you have, you know, the generator was a single output. So that was really easy. We were able to hook that straight to the base, the, you know, the power distribution of the base and that branch right there. If you don't have that, uh, if you have multiple inputs, well, what do you do? Uh, you would use a root combiner. And so I mean, it's in the name, it's designed to combine root power sources. That's its, that's its primary purpose. And so all you have to do is place one less root combiner than you have so, uh, root power sources. So we have three, three solar panels here. So we need two root combiners. If I had 10 solar panels, I would need nine root combiners. And so then all you do, and this is very, very simple, just choose your color if you like, you can hold R and choose a color and click on it. Uh, and you would just daisy chain the output of one root combiner into any of the outputs on uh, the input, excuse me, on the other root combiner. And so then it, once you do that, you'll see that it leaves you with one, one, two, three um, available inputs. And so then you would just take the output of all your root power sources. In this case, we're talking about solar panels and you just run them into the different, uh, different uh, inputs there. And so there we go. And then we have a final one here. And that one's gonna run into the input, the final available input. That's why I, that's why it doesn't matter which one you choose to daisy chain because you'll have three left. This is why you need one less than the number of root power sources is because you have to connect them together. And so there you go. You have three solar panels hooked into two root combiners and the output of that is the output that runs to your the input on your base and so in this case again the input on the base power distribution is going to be this branch switch and so we have 57 and 2 and so you have 60 arriving here and then 59 to play with and so that's that's it that's how you hook up uh solar panels place solar panels if you have problems with them if you notice that they're not putting out what they should in direct sunlight it's probably because they're being blocked by something they they, they can't be in shade um, walls can block them. Uh, wind turbines are notoriously uh, notorious for, for for blocking them. So uh, when in doubt, you know, put them just on the very top of your base and uh, try not to have anything shade them. If if you're if they're near a wind turbine and you got some that are just not outputting, it's probably the wind turbine. And so that, folks, is solar panels. So the last uh, root power source we're going to talk about is the wind turbine. Uh, the wind turbine can be purchased. Uh, in fact, yeah, wind turbine can be purchased at Bandit Camp right here, wind turbine, 500 scrap. Um, you can also, I forgot to mention, you can purchase the the uh, solar panel at, at Outpost for 75 scrap. Same thing with the generator, 125 scrap. Um, so all three of these are purchasable and just depending on how much you wanna spend, 75 for the for the solar panels is kind of a steal if you don't have any BPs. So, um, and, but 500 for the wind turbine, you know, if you're trying to do something that requires this kind of power, 
uh, and you want to go buy that, you can if you don't want to use the tech tree or find it in BPA. So the output of the wind turbine varies. And so what's going to happen is the you have a single output up here for the wind turbine and that output's going to vary. So right now it says 144. It has a max output of 150, but it depends on its placement um, on the map and its height. And so if you, you know, the coastal areas have more wind um, and if you're in the center of the map, you know, there's less wind, but you can counteract that by installing this really high on a, on a frame. Uh, and you'll see people do that all the time. And that's because again, this, this output is gonna vary anyway. It's 144 now, 10 minutes ago before I started making this video, it was 150. Earlier today, it was 90. Uh, and so they, what they'll do is the higher they're placed, the higher their average output will be. They're always gonna fluctuate a little bit. There you go, 143 now. And so it's, I think it's creeping down. What'll happen is you just need, and you know, in a future video, we'll talk about batteries and their required power, but you're gonna need a minimum output to keep your batteries charged and the solar panel will give you the highest average output. So as long as you install this correctly, uh, you'll get an average output that will keep your base from your batteries from dying. Um, when you go to place them, um, they have, in fact, we might as well just grab another one. When you go to place them, you can rotate them with R like this, and you'll see they have an open side, which I've already, you know, faced toward me. So just, you know, consider that you can't pick these up. You can pick up solar panels um, and they'll take damage. You can fix them. You can pick up the generator and fix it. You can't, you cannot take down a wind turbine. So think carefully before you install it because whatever direction it's facing, that's the direction it's gonna face unless you break it. Um, so connecting it to the base, if it's just a single wind, wind turbine is incredibly easy uh, because all you do is just connect from the power out. This is the only connectable um, port on the wind turbine. You would just connect that to the um, to the input on your base, which in this case, of course, I'm, I'm doing as a branch switch. So if I were to connect this, there you go, that's it. We've got 140, 138 now coming in and 135 going out. So you can see this is gonna fluctuate. And then that's, that's it, that's all you'd have to do. Um, if you, and a lot of people end up doing this, if you supplement this with solar panels, we can actually use this solar panel installation uh, to show uh, how to, um, you know, to uh, to add more root power sources. Um, so again, 250 health, so decently strong against the 100 uh, health of the solar panel, but they're a much bigger target, so they kind of offset by that, right? Uh, so let's just say this was your base, actually, and you have that, and you had these solar panels, and you wanted to connect them all up. That's one, two, three, four root power sources, and we already have two of these hooked up, and so I could just add another. Uh, root combiner here. So now we have four root power sources and three root combiners, well, always one less. And you would just unhook this from the base here and you would run this, I'll keep this in red. You could run this over to the one of the inputs on this root combiner over here. Obviously in a normal situation, you would just have these together inside your base somewhere. Don't place the root combiners on your roof because they're really easy to destroy. And if somebody destroys them, it unhooks your power from your base. So put these inside your base. And then the the, the uh, power from the the output of your of your um, of your wind turbine here is just going to connect up to up to your uh, over to your other input on your root combiner over here. So I'll just run this over here like so. There you go. And so now we've hooked we have our four four root powers going into our three root combiners and our total power output with the three solar panels and that right now is currently 194 which is huge um there are honestly not a ton of reasons to have you know a sustained average of say 180 or more going you know, you're kind of allocated, your, your, your battery will charge a lot faster. There are some very advanced circuit that you could use for this, uh, but for the most part, if you're starting out, um, your your output really should just be somewhere around 140 to 160 on, on average. Um, and for most cases, honestly, 125 is the minimum, but you know, I think 140 is safer to keep to make sure that your battery's charged in case something happens. Uh, so that, folks, is all I've got. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Uh, stay tuned for the next installment of this video. You can get me on my Discord. See you later.